Hi, everybody. Tom Stewart here. Um, can, you hear me? can you hear me, Paul? <laughs> yes. Wonderful. <laughs> no, no, no. We just got to get Liz to join us. And um, hey, Liz, Paul's here. Why don't you join us? Hey, guys. Welcome. It's been. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, we just uh, had to go live. If not, the window for us to do this would close and we'd have to set up another meeting. It would take 10 more minutes for us to. Oh, okay. I get it. Oh, all right. And we didn't want to do that. So we're, we're live right now. Okay. Um, what part of the country are you in? I am in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, wow. Okay. You're uh, somewhere on the West coast. I'm in Auburn, Washington. Okay. How far is that from uh, from Olympia? Oh, say an hour drive, maybe not quite that much. It okay. depends on traffic, but right now it'd probably be oh, probably forty five minutes. I'm thinking. Okay, a little bit north into the west, east, I should say. Well, it looks like uh, Liz is 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 efforting to join uh, us here. Hey, Liz. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon. Uh, oh, you're already live. Hello. Yes. Are live. It's uh, six after. I when, when Paul got on, I said, hey Paul, I'm sorry to do this, but we're going live because if I do, <laughs> we have to stop another meeting, and you know how that drill goes. <laughs> uh, hey Caleb, good to see you. All right. Uh, Tom, I don't know if you know, Caleb is in one of our mastermind groups. Did you and know he, that? And I saw him uh, in Las Vegas on Facebook driving around in a Lamborghini, I believe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is definitely Caleb. Yeah. Caleb, oh. is that your new car? Did you buy it with idle money? Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. No, don't even. Don't even. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't joke. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and get my phone up live. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us today, Paul, and helping us out. We really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate awesome. you asking me. Yeah, I appreciate so, you asking me, for sure. Yeah, anytime we have an opportunity to help people out. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he did buy that car. Seriously? Did you really buy that car, Caleb? <laughs> Congratulations. I feel kind of irritated with you that you didn't already tell us about this in group. <laughs> Why am I finding out about it on Facebook? You're going to pay for that. All right. All right. I'm trying to pull up you guys on the live so I can see comments and see who's up. Okay. So um, does anybody have any <laughs> rent? <laughs> does anybody have any questions before we get started? Y'all know why we have Paul on. There we go. We're live. All right. We've got a, a big lag on here. Yeah. All right. Hey, Audra. Uh, good to see you. Another one of the regulars on. So uh, our whole purpose today, or our major focus, is, is, is going to be uh, looking at ways to help our workforce. Uh, I guess raise their, their 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 awareness of financial planning and how to manage their monies in a way where you know they can take care of the things that they need to take care of. And I'm saying our employees, you know, ourselves as well. We all will have opportunity to to learn more in this regard and and um, hopefully build wealth over time uh, more than than just uh, going from paycheck to paycheck. And, and Paul, I understand that. Uh, you have some programs and, 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 and some, some experience, and this is kind of your, your area of expertise. Yes. I, I <laughs> part of it's from um, personal experience. Part of it is just learning it as we go. And, and I mean, so as an example, like the last three or four months, um, a lot of people have been off work, totally unforeseen. And most people, are not prepared for that. That's what we call an emergency fund. And a lot of people, they use plastic for that. 
And uh, so we, we, one thing we do is sit that we sit down and ask people about that kind of stuff. And many people don't. And so I always ask people if they ever played sports in school, I, it's just an analogy. Many of the people say, yes. My next question is, did they teach the rules of the game? Well, yeah. Why do you think they did that? Well, so we could play the game. So like in the Northwest here, I ask people if they ever, if, if, if they imagine going out and seeing the Mariners or the, the Seahawks play their respective games and then not knowing the rules of the game. Would they look like a bunch of knuckleheads playing the game? Yeah, they sure would. Well, the thing is, is every time anybody we know gets paid, my experience is most of them never got an education about money in school, so they have not a clue, most of them don't, about what to do with that paycheck to make it work for the family the best. And so yeah, well, I think that's the key point, Paul. I mean, I feel like everybody knows how to make it work, right? We spend it. We buy all the stuff that we need, and that's how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> we get what we want, and, you know, we get it fast. But like right. you said, it's not the way to make it work the best. Right. So we have – I have a friend of mine that he had a uh, – he has a three-year-old car. And the next time I saw him, he had a, it was a white car. Next time I saw him, he had a black car. And I thought, uh, he must be getting his oil changed. And they gave him a loaner. Oh, no. They made him a good deal. His payment only increased $30 a month. Yeah, for how many years? Because the previous conversation I had with the guy was, he was working his way out of debt. And I'm scratching my head here thinking, I mean, I didn't ask, but I was sort of thinking, what on earth were you doing? Now you went from two years left on your car to you've got seven? Are you kidding me? Oh. Anyway, so I mean, I mean, just so sometimes it helps to, if we're thinking about buying whatever it is we're buying, sometimes it might help to find a person or two, maybe even three that we trust that we can bounce things off of. To get somebody other, someone, someone else's perspective on this is what I'm thinking about doing. Got any thoughts? So anyway, yeah, I, you, think, I, th I that think that's sense? a great idea, Paul. Um, I, I, so I, I, I know that I need that because one of my big problems is I love a deal. If there's <laughs> a deal, I, I'm buying it. I want to buy the thing because in my mind, I'm saving money. By buying it today at right. twenty percent off, right? So yeah, there you I go. have to buy that green belt. I need it today. <laughs> today. So I have and a friend. I know I yeah, she. Well, so we were gonna we we're getting on Zoom and all that stuff, and of course we're talking about lighting and whatnot. Anyway, so she says I never buy anything regular price. She showed me this light, and I was gonna pay ninety bucks for it. Uh, no, you don't want to do that. Do this. So I got the same light for seventy dollars less. The yeah, same light. That's, yeah, that's well, my gal yeah, right yeah. there. Yes, and on top of that, I need it. So yeah, that's a good one. I like it. But you know, my daughter talked to me about needs versus wants, and you know, there's so that is you know, okay. So what do you in terms of buying a vehicle? Well, what if you figure out what what a payment would be for yourself and start a savings account, if you will, and start paying yourself that payment. And let's say you get five grand in cash and you take maybe your existing vehicle and five grand in cash and go down and get the vehicle you want or something close to it and then keep saving that payment. And then you have that car you paid cash for along with some cash you do that kind of thing. Um, what is and, this? What is this concept that you're talking about, Paul? What is, I don't understand this concept. What is it? Saving, saving, saving money, and but yeah. you have a specific target in in mind. Do so you want you want to get a car? Yeah, well, like a like a Lamborghini. Well, probably not one of those because those the, the people that drive those um, they're not worried about money. <laughs> so one of my friends. That's on here today. He actually, he just bought a Lamborghini. And 
I don't know if you follow um, Dave Ramsey, but he's a Dave Ramsey follower. So if he bought a Lamborghini, he's not making payment. Yeah, he's got it. So I have a whole presentation here. So, so, so shall I get started? Sure. Ah, uh, sure. That'd be great. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to bring this thing up. So I don't know what's going to. So, okay, it's here and um, so on can the you guys screen see it all? Nope. Go to the screen um, that has our pictures on it, and you see where it says down at the bottom, it says share screen. Um, actually, I don't. All right. Do you see um, where – do you see a box that says you're in the show? Do you, do you see the screen with the three of us on it? I don't see that. I see. I only see me. Hang on a second. Let me. Okay. So. If you find, I see it, yeah, right here. You need to find the uh, web browser that you logged in with. Share screen. I see that. Okay. Let me let me click on that. Okay, now I've got to go over here to this. Is that working? Uh, do you see the screen with the three of us on it? I don't see the three. No, I don't. Okay, well, that's kind of where we need to start. You've got a you've got a uh, browser tab in there somewhere. It'll say StreamYard at the top of it. I see. Share my screen. Entire screen. Does it say share my screen or share screen? No, it says share your screen. Nope, that's not right. How about share? Nope. Okay, so Paul, look at the top. Um, yeah. Look at the tabs. What tab are you in? It says StreamYard. It says StreamYard? Okay, great. Um, click where it says StreamYard, right where it says StreamYard, on the little duck space. Hang on a second here. Let me cancel this. Okay, I can see. Y'all thought I was bad, right? I'm directing, right? Look how good <laughs> I am, you guys. <laughs> it's a it's a running joke around here about how I can never do anything uh, <laughs> technologically. Yeah, well, well I, I'm so right I'm appreciating. Now down at the bottom, I see <laughs> share screen. Is that one to click? Does it say share screen or share your screen? This says share, share screen, period. That's it. Okay, that's it. And right next to it, does it say leave studio? No. Are we getting closer or further away? Down, down where it says share screen, what is next to that? Oh, one says leave studio to, to my right, and to the left it says yeah. can Okay, so that's right. All right, so now go to share screen. Yeah. Click on that, just click on it one time. And now another window will pop up. It did. Okay, good. So on that window, you have some choices. You have a choice on the left, and then you have a choice in the middle that says application. Do you see that choice? Application window. Yep, pick that. Oh. Okay, and, and now you should see maybe your PowerPoint or something like that. Not yet. Or your disk desktop. What do you see? What were your choices when you picked application window? What's the StreamYard? As the mail? As the Zoom US? Hmm. Well, I, I don't want to hit share down the lower right. You want try it. I think that says cancel Zoom. No, okay, that's a Zoom window. You want to get rid of that. If you can X out of that so that it doesn't have anything to do with us, doesn't keep confusing the issue. If you have other things open is what's causing trouble. Okay. So just X out of that Zoom. All righty. Got a Zoom okay. and out of here. Just try and get out of everything except StreamYard. Okay. So up at the top, the only tab you have is the StreamYard tab. Is that right? Yep, that's it. Yep, that's it. Perfect. Now you should see on your screen. What do you see on your screen? Tell us. 
I see Tom and myself and you. And Perfect. That's you the screen if you want. Pardon me? That's good. That's the screen we want. All right. Now go down below. You see share screen again, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to do this first. Paul, I'm doing it on my side so that I okay. can see the choices we have. All right. I'm out again. So up at the top, go back yep. in there. And it says application window, pick that. Okay. And some choices popped up. Little windows popped up. Yeah, hit that window. Pick, yep, pick the one that um, shows your screen. I haven't got anything yet that shows my screen here. This is what I this is what I have. So I need to get I guess I need to get um hang on one second here. Not share and in do you this. know how to send your PowerPoint? Might be easier if we just um, open up your PowerPoint on our end, and then you can just talk about it and tell us when to change the page. Well, I I, I suppose I could do that. Yeah, that might be easier. Um, you you uh, you can send it to Liz if you would, and she can can drive for you. Yes, I. Uh, All right. Okay. So Sean is saying he's going to want you on his Facebook Live pretty soon because he loves this topic. He's a, a friend of ours that also does a Facebook Live. I think he does his on Thursdays. Uh -huh. um, every week, every week on Thursday, and yeah. you're going to have to get better at this, Paul. Yeah. You're going to have people, right? <laughs> and you're going to have Absolutely. people well, there I would on. Let me see. Um, this is. Tom, is there a way to on on this program? Is there a way to take over his mouse in Streamyard? Nope. Oh. I know there is in Zoom, and I know there is in uh, Ring Central, but I hate to pull him out of. So what is your Liz, give me your email. I'll try email it to you. Sure. It's American made, M A I D. Oh, American made Comcast. I got it right here. Yep. Tom, get off your phone. Keep us entertained, Tom. I don't know. What to do. I mean, I think if you guys are doing a good job of that yourselves. <laughs> so. Um, we always had a tough time <laughs> to employees that reimbursement wasn't meant to buy things. It's meant to save and pay for your auto maintenance and repairs. Any advice? Oh, well, Paul, while you're doing that, Tom, you know the answer to this question. I'm going to let you answer Sean while I work with Paul. I'm sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> Tom gets, gets stressed out. <laughs> no, I'm trying, I'm trying to get some work done. Um, Tom, um, no. Employees that reimbursement wasn't meant to buy things. It's meant to save and pay them for auto maintenance. Any advice? Yeah. I mean, it, it, what you're really talking about is life cycle, you know, maintenance for, for, for vehicles. And, you know, you pay so much a mile or so much per, per day or how much ever you're doing it, but explain that, uh, Every, I don't know, 5,000 miles, you have to change the oil, and that costs, I don't know, 50 bucks, let's say, and kind of do the math and divide that by, you know, how many 50 bucks by 5,000 miles and say that uh, every mile you're going to have to save a penny to pay for your, your oil change. And you have to buy tires every 30,000 miles and that costs a thousand bucks. So you take a thousand and divide it by 30,000 and kind of itemize all that and say, you know what, you know, every time you drive your car a mile, you're actually spending, you know, 30 cents or whatever. So you need to be saving 30 cents every time you drive your car a mile so you can pay for these things when you have to. That's why we pay you hopefully more than 30 cents a mile to pay for it for all those things. So really, it's a matter of itemizing it and explain that uh, they might buy tires every other year or so and get an oil change every, you know, I don't know, three or four months. But they're actually 
consuming those things that they buy sporadically every mile they go down the road. So that would be the way that you would want to explain that. Okay, so Paul, I have your PowerPoint. Um, oh, good. Cool. Un unshare your screen so that okay. I can share mine. Yeah, I don't have the option to share anymore. So I'm thinking that you still have the share. Well, you can't you share it, really? You still have yours connected. So, um, do you have a window up that says share your screen? Sure. Um, if you no. do, I want you to the little cancel button. Okay, what do you have on your screen right now? I'm in the show uh, down the lower left, and then, and then I have the, the, uh, four. the three of us are in it. Four to me, Liz. Should okay. I leave the studio? I can yeah, don't worry about it. You you wait. Just hang out for a second right. here. Okay. I just saved it to my desktop, Tom, so it's coming. Tom, you're even making me stressy. I'm getting all hot and sweaty. This is this is a this is a classic. We'll remember this one for a while. <laughs> we will remember this. We're halfway through with our Facebook Live right now. <laughs> well, I do have. I want to. I I want to make sure that they offer at the end. I have a a link that everybody is welcome to go to. It's 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 a link for a a free online fix your money or finances. It's uh, it's it's an hour a week. It's all it's all well. It's live, but it's it's all been recorded. So they can go on there at their leisure, and it goes through. I mean, it's packed with content. So this and, is the thing that I was um, uh, really looking forward to getting into everybody's hands for their employees, Paul. Yes. Well, they all they need to do is have the link. But what I'm also able to do is is we can sit down via Zoom for people that are all over the U.S. or whatnot. And if they're married, I want to sit down with both husband and wife. Yes, no kidding. And we will go through so we find out where they are now and where they want to be tomorrow. Tomorrow as in at retirement. Now, I know things change and everything like that. but we So so that's what we call a finan a, our financial GPS. That's one of the things I have in the, in the PowerPoint because, again, most people don't have a mercy fund. Most people are not set up for diddly squat is my experience. Uh -huh. uh, so we're able to go through that kind of thing and, and, and do that for, for families. And what it's going to do is it's going to show them, you know, did you get a large income tax refund? Well, yeah, well, let's change some things. You know, do you have, we go through the whole budget with them. So regardless of what they make, we can do that. And then we go through oh. and, Go ahead. Huh? No, I said, cool. That sounds, sounds great. Oh, yeah. Me. So, you know, so one thing I know a lot of people, a lot of employees think they, they're, they're okay with stuff through work. Well, if you get laid off, you lose everything. If you, ha unless you have some sort of retirement program, you'll be able to keep that. We can roll those over. You might have two or three retirement programs left at previous, previous employment and we can roll all that kind of stuff over, but talk about, you know, do you have, we talk about having uh, an emergency fund. We talked about earlier, we talk about identity theft. Do you have a will? A will could be a last love letter you have for your family because a lot of times people die without wills and talk about create the possibility of creating animosity with your family. Oh my goodness. Next thing we talk about is auto homeowners insurance. You know, if you're a renter, do you have renter's insurance? That is one of the biggest things that they need to have because if they lose, if they if there's a fire, the home the people that own the property they have homeowners or fire insurance, but the renters are not covered at all. So so fire so renters insurance would cover all that kind of stuff. Then then we go in and talk to you about Vivint. We do home security systems because we're in homes every single day of the week. So we talk about that. Another thing we talk about is, is life insurance, income replacement. And then we get in and we educate folks about that. And we talk about um, most people put their money into banks 
insurance companies, credit unions, and what have you. So we're talking about bypass the middleman. Um, so we want to talk about, uh, we talk about cash value insurance, like whole life insurance, universal life, variable life. And then we talk about term insurance, where a company talks about by term insurance. What? Then, what? Yeah. I, I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that. Right. Well, it's life insurance with no savings to it. So I ask you a question. Your car insurance, does it have a savings account with it? Nope. Thank you. Does your, um, and you have homeowners on your house? Yep. Okay. Does that have a savings account with it? Nope. Didn't think so. Renters insurance doesn't either. So there's no reason. I mean, a lot of, a lot of insurance companies want to sell you cash value insurance because they make a lot of money, but we, we have a different philosophy. We want to say buy term insurance, which is just pure protection. Take the difference and put that into a mutual fund, a mutual fund. You own it. So I have all this on the PowerPoint, but anyway, I'll just explain it to you. Well, um, your, your PowerPoint is getting pulled up. Tom's pulling that up for us right now. I think. <laughs> Are you able to get that pulled up, Tom? Yep, I am. Um, just- all right. So yeah. when, what I, um, I, I do have a question, though, Paul, from what sure. you're talking about. Is all of the stuff that you're talking about, is this all in that 10-week course? Or is this all stuff that we have to sit down one on one? Because you know what, I'm not all about that. <laughs> that sounds horrible <laughs> to me. I would rather be poor than have to get my husband to sit down with me in a room at night and have this conversation. I'd rather be poor. Well, you can listen to it yourself. It's just what we find is it's better to have husband and wife together because men and women inherently think differently. Yeah, absolutely. And- most women are security minded more than on the average than, than men are on the average. So when we sit down, yeah, there you go. So we want to be able to sit down with them together because, you know, the wife could be saying something and the husband totally disagree or whatever, or vice versa. Um, so we, we try to them both, but everybody's different. So if, if you're one that can sit down and do it yourself um, and then your husband's going to do the same thing, because it's, if we find it, it's, if we can get them both on the same page, it makes life a whole lot easier. <laughs> so, um, okay. So well, here is your PowerPoint, Paul. Um, why don't you just tell us when you want us to change pages and Tom will. Okay, well, go ahead. And so, so I'll talk about how money works and then go on to the next one. First, first real quick. <coughs> we, um, we're very short on time now. So you're going to have to. Yeah, 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 we are. Exactly. So how much time do I have? You have about 20 uh, minutes. Okay. All right. Great. Well, this is right. just, uh, we're part of the New York Stock Exchange and our sticker is PRI. You can go to the next one. Oh, sorry. I'm not helping. That's all right. Give us a uh, thumbs up when you want him to switch, Paul, and he'll switch back. Okay. So we call ourselves a financial company for the 21st century. So we're founded in 77 with 85 people. We got 5 million lives insured and 2 million invested with us. Go, Tom, so, go. Go, okay. Tom, go. Okay. They can read. Go. Okay, go got it. This is a good group. They're very fast. They're business owners. They do this <laughs> for a living. Right. I promise you. They're on it. Um, I, go, go, go. You guys yeah. trust them. They have a they have a mission statement. We're good. Okay, got it. You know, they they want to to it. it. This is so cool. Here, so here, uh, there you go. Keep going. Okay, that's totally true. Most people don't get a financial education. Don't, yeah, I like this. Don't get a financial coach. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, we, we pay tuition every day, don't we? <laughs> we <true>. do. <laughs> true. It's true. Yeah. So we're just talking about paycheck to paycheck, you know, a lot of debt, uh, credit cards, life insurance. And not much for savings uh, for retirement. So I, was just, I was just reading a book, and uh, the guy that wrote the book said that he would love to have a credit card balance of sixteen thousand eight hundred eighty-three dollars. That sounds yeah. like a dream to him. <laughs> I think we might have some people on the call like that, or on the Facebook Live like that. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, and so this is what you were talking about, your financial GPS, right? Yes, ma'am, that is exactly. All right, cool. I like the idea. I really like that concept, right? GPS makes really good sense to me. 
And who would pull out the the map when you have GPS too? Yes, the way we can do that over Zoom but with anybody we sit down with, and we can we can figure it out for them. Okay. How much? Basically, this is talking about how much will you need for retirement. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Denise. <laughs> okay. This is how you figure out how much you want to retire in 30 years. The number. So so we would ask people a bunch of questions to yeah. arrive at this number for them. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, factoring in inflation. So everybody has a different number, right? Depending on, yeah, on yeah, how yeah, old yeah. they are. How much yeah. money they want to have. Yes. Okay. Now, now, for, now, if I'm able to get people in their 20s, maybe 30s, maybe even 40s, yeah. I might be able to show them how they can retire maybe if they're 20s, maybe five or 10 years before they're actually thinking they can. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally get that. We do have some young people on this call, too. Yeah. An owner, not alone. Oh, I like that. Become an owner, not a loner. You guys, that's awesome, right? That's a good one. We like, we like some catchphrases around here. Um, I do have to ask though, Tom, I don't think we have ever had a Facebook Live go this historically wrong. Would you call this an unprecedented event? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, uh, within the context of smart business moves, yeah. If you get the bigger context, we could probably you know put this oh. in five, but we've had other. <laughs> Okay, but I feel like we're we're getting on track here. We're catching up, Paul. This is this is looking better here. I'm liking some of this stuff now. This is good. I'm I'm glad. Before we get in any any deeper, I'm kind of curious. Are we going to be able to tie this back into? I mean, we're we're all business, you know, owners here, and and the idea is how can we help our our employees become more financially? Uh, well, if we teach them this stuff here. And we can sit down with them. Um, you teach who? The employees? What's that? Did you say you teach the employees this stuff? Yeah, the because group? I mean, most of them, I mean, a lot of them have, have trouble with money. And if, if we can t teach them from the, the some basics, they're going to have a lot less, tr they're going to they're gonna feel a lot more comfortable because they understand where their paycheck is, how their paycheck is being spent. You know, do they have emergency funds? They have this, they have that. We can go through that with them. I think our people need something, um, and, and not to belittle our people in any way, shape, or form, right. um, but a lot of times they're not at this level yet. Um, a lot of our people don't even have checking accounts, so right. this might be talking about stuff that is um, uh, too, it's too advanced. So that's why I was hoping that we would be able to get to the, the training, the 10 weeks of training, so that they can get the stuff grow their, yeah. their knowledge. Yeah. That will help in us. I know half of me the other day. So there's somebody that they said they didn't have a checking account. Well, what? Well, they owe the bank. So I'm guessing some of these people, if they don't have an account, they probably owe the bank money. So what that means is that the, every bank, if you go into a bank and you owe them money, they're going to, you're going to, your name is going to be put on a list. So no matter what bank you go to, your if your name pops up on this list, you need to go back to that bank that you don't want to go back to because you owe them money and pay the money back back once you pay that money back to that bank then you're going to be free to open go to any bank and open up an account but again they got to pay the bank that they owe money to right so i i think you understand that, that this is some some of the people that we are um working with um, yep. but but this the this presentation is probably a little over their head well maybe not let's go now let's well, zoom the, through. The, uh, let's the, let's uh, some stuff for our people. Right. The link, I th it's going to go. It's it's going to be. It's going to go into a lot of detail, and I think that would really help them a lot. Okay. And they can a do lot. it at their own pace. Yes. It's it's yeah. The yeah. link they can go in and register for it, and yes, definitely. All right. Let's let's okay. go. We're getting into the rule of seventy-two here. You're going to make us do some math. Go ahead, Paul. No, I'm actually it's it, just a percent of interest that you're paying or you're getting going to show you how, how quick your money will double um, so it may it can work for you or against you so this is if you keep mm -hmm. tapping on that thing it's going to you know three percent you know every every 24 years and it's going to well, Leslie makes a Leslie's making a really good point too if they owe child support they won't have a bank account it's another reason not to have a bank account uh, I've got a lot of single mothers and 
you, you can't have a bank account if you owe child support because they'll just take the money out. So it's a, a, a different, you know, it's a different mindset as well. Uh, we ran into that in Portland. We had right. plenty of people like that. Okay. All right. So this is just showing you, you know, that what most people don't learn in school about this is a simple concept, but it, it's it's really powerful. If you can get money working for you, that compounding interest is like magic. I mean, it's like, holy Toledo, it went up and my account went up. Well, and Tom, you actually teach this in foundations about, you know, the compounding numbers. You don't specifically talk about this aspect of it, but you talk about it with um, price increases and and inflation and what happens to your money over time. With, I mean, yeah, we, 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 we do. Yeah. But, you know, the idea of, of, of educating our, our workforce, our cleaning professionals, our entire staff on right. how to, how to take a little bit of money and, and build wealth with it is. Yeah. It, I, mean, it's, it's, I like the idea of building wealth. I don't think that our people ever think in, terms of the word wealth and connect it to themselves. So I like the idea of teaching our people to build wealth for themselves. I just don't think they, at least I know a lot of my people, uh -huh. don't think that is a concept that, that have, connects have you ever anyway. shared with them about the book by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's a uh, great we, book. We have it as we have it as part of our library, but a lot of our people, um, uh, I, I'm lying. I was just going to lie right there. So I'm going to reel that back before the lie actually comes out. Uh, we've only had three people check that book out, and none of them liked it. They didn't understand, like, what is he talking about? He's crazy. What? What is he, like, he thinks dead people are in the room with him. And I'm like, okay, well, you can't listen to everything that Napoleon Hill says. But he's right. got some good messages as well. <laughs> so yeah, we, we haven't had good luck with that. Um, you know which one we did have good luck with is the uh, Millionaire Mind. Yeah. People brought that book. Yeah. And then the Millionaire Next Door. I think we've had a little bit of luck with that book. As okay. Well. And I know a lot of people follow Dave Ramsey. We have a lot of um, business owners. But all right, let's see. What do we got? Save more money and accept a lower percentage, or save less money at a higher percentage. All right, so I guess I'm gonna save less money at a higher percentage. <laughs> yeah. Next slide. <laughs> uh, don't pay the high cost of waiting. Sooner you begin to save, the greater, yeah. There's a cost to waiting, right? Either you're there gonna- is. Yeah, that's why we wanna get try to get young people to start immediately. And so this is perfect for us. We do need this for our people because we do have a lot of people that are younger. And if we can get them started on a savings plan, and I don't know about you guys, but it is hard to get my people uh, to sign up on a savings plan. We even did a sharing program to help them. Yeah. Um, for every $25 that they save in a savings account, and we'll even take it directly out of their check for them, that we would put in $2. So, you know, uh, not a ton of money, but you put in 25, we'll give you two. You put in 25 more, we'll give you two more. So well, that's that, awesome. Well, you would think, but not not a lot of people wanted to do that. That was didn't didn't make sense. Yeah, we have to get them um, long term, and we're able to get people invest in mutual funds for as little as 25 or 50 bucks a month. I mean, 25 bucks a month. Seriously. I I love the idea of mutual funds for our employees too. I follow Dave Ramsey, uh, at least try to. Shannon, yeah, paid a lot of last year, but I would be interested in a savings plan. All right, awesome. All right, let's go. Paul, I mean, Tom, sorry. I'm going to call you Paul. Oh, I got to go the next slide. This is just Ooh. showing you time value money. So, person on the left. They start when they're 22 and they and they go through until they're 29 to put in 44 grand. The guy on the right, he plays parties or does whatever he does, doesn't start till 30. And uh, you can see 44 grand compared to over 200 grand. And if the guy kept going on the left, how much more they'd actually have. I mean, it's amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. Two million to one point eight over there. Yeah. And this guy, the guy on the left when he put 44 grand in. Yeah, 
it's it, you know it's kind of like exponential growth if you're like doubling like 10 percent interest the rule of 72 every seven years you're doubling your money yeah you know numbers start to get big when they double several times well a great analogy is okay i know you all been on a plane so if you, if you got a plane going on the runway it's not seemingly not doing anything except getting airspeed next thing you know it takes off and that's exactly what the magic compounding interest looks like so then we talk yeah. about investing here i think we've all seen the um that riddle too, I, I guess not really a riddle, but it's, it's always presented as a riddle. Which would you rather have a million dollars or a penny that doubles every day for a month? There right? you go. So that, that's a, a common little thing. It's huge. Uh, yeah. All right. The three. So if you guys haven't heard that and you haven't done it, try it. Take your penny and double it every day for a month and look at how much money you would have at the end of just 30 days. One it's a penny. Chunk. Those four pennies, eight pennies. It's a long time to get any kind of money at all, right? One penny, two pennies, four pennies, eight pennies, 16 pennies, 32 pennies. I'm already a week in. I still don't even have a buck. 64 cents a week in. So how am I going to be at any kind of an appreciable amount of money at a month? So do the math, y'all. All right. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, this is dollar cost averaging. So, so as an example, we talk to people about investing every month, just like clockwork. And well, what happens if it crashes? Well, guess what? You keep investing. Perfect example. We just went through it. So the market went down 30%. Well, you know, our company stock was at 138. I, I was able to buy it at 70. It was on sale. So every time I know people want to buy things on sale, I don't care what they're talking about. Did you? Because I ask them, what was the last thing you bought? And I don't care what they say. I say, well, was it for sale or on sale? Huh? Um, so everything, everything I buy is on sale. This is not good. It's not a, not a good thing to always buy everything on sale because you can be sucked in and lured into things that you don't need. Well, sometimes this is true. I have a friend of mine. She she gets she sucked into um, to uh -huh. Amazon. <laughs> but anyway, in terms of the market, if it's if it crashes, it's a great time to invest. Discipline, staying yeah. focused. And that, you know, for all that kind of, and, and being diversified. So that's where like a mutual fund would come in handy because one mutual fund can be in as many as 100 to 150 different companies and they're all diversified, very diversified. Let's go, Tom. All right. I'm thinking, you guys, for your employees, before you start talking to them about investing, make sure that they're saving. So saving first, right? Like, yeah, that emergency fund. Yes, absolutely. Okay, teach them how to save some money and get into the habit of getting money out first. A mutual fund is one of the most effective long-term investment vehicles. Okay, great. So this is just talking about the cycle here. So we're talking about here having people invest. They go pull their money in, into the fund. And so we, what the fund is going to do, they're going to hire people. That, that's Their whole job is to go out there and seek out companies in which to invest. And they're all over the world. And then they do that. And then... Um, then they buy bonds and other stocks and whatnot go through there. And then regardless of the price and it goes over here. So legally, you know, if you want to withdraw some money from a fund, they have to have your money to you within seven days. Now with the new things with the online and so forth, generally speaking, you can get your money a little bit quicker than that, but that's a whole, keep going, Tom. pardon me. You, you can keep talking, Paul, but I want Tom to keep going because we're running out of time really, really okay. fast here. Tony, so anyway, let's just talked about, you know, who, which, which is going to make more money. Everybody wants to be in a rising market, but the reality of it is we're in a fluctuating market all the time. So you can go to the next one. So A, you know, everybody, they got $600 here. If you look over here to the right, you got 42 shares. They got 840 over here. And below that, B, they got... 126 shares and then they got 1260. So in the fluctuating market, if a market goes down, you're buying that uh, that many more shares because the price per share has gone down and you're only investing a hundred dollars a month. So so both of these people invest the same amount of money, but one on the uh, person B has made a lot more money they've got more shares if you're investing the same amount of money every month stock market going down is a good thing you're just buying more stock it only exactly matters. the stock value only matters at the time you're trying to sell it yeah 
then third responsibility. So we're talking here on the left about, you know, young kids, debts, mortgage. So if this is what we're talking about um, in terms of like life insurance, as an example, um, we want to be able to replace an income. So out here at retirement, most people will re reach retirement. So kids are growing out of the house, debts are down, mortgages paid, but we need to have cash to live on. Social Security, it'll do a little bit. It might buy a piece of bubble gum or maybe a tank of gas, but it's, it's, it's not going to be enough to, quote, live on. So that's why we want to have people impress upon them to start putting money away for the long term. Now we talk about cash versus buy term invested difference here on the left. You know, it says here you got 150000 each one, and they're paying um, – the amount to 297 and then then you got term insurance here so the double the coverage a lot less money you take 175 and put that in the mutual fund you own both so well, it's this like, is the same idea as paying off your credit cards by paying the same amount each month and as you pay one off take that extra money and and put it and then more goes toward your principal it gets paid off faster Kind of the same idea so that you and keep and so on the right growing your savings so now the link over here in the roller right is the link to the to the 12 week class they can get oh this is what we want right here okay tom this is yeah. what i've been waiting for paul <laughs> all right okay. tom grab that link for us and so what what we're looking for here you guys are, are thinking is that you can take this link and maybe for 10 weeks, uh, present one class to your employees, eat, you know, like every Monday morning and let them or give the send the link out on Monday and let them take the, the class over the course of the week, send the next one out the next Monday, maybe have some um, bonuses or rewards for anybody that can answer two questions, three questions about the training that they went through. And, and maybe have, have them begin a, a goals program. What do they want to save for first? And, and my suggestion, you, know, you guys know, I have had a, a goals program in our company for 20 years now. Start small. It's okay if the first thing that they want to buy is a purse. That's fine. Have them start with saving money for a purse. And once they get that purse, it's more exciting to then go for the next bigger thing and and heck nowadays some purses are expensive too <laughs> so it's a good thing to be saving for i heard they can right, be sorry. yeah, yeah they gonna, can be i was going to hand out my number i didn't get my number on there but my name and number if they want it i was going to do that too if uh, they want. yeah absolutely we will we can put it in the the notes here okay um, paul up, up in the chat i can i'll, sure. I'll put it in my paul what is your number it's a 206 713 okay. Pacific time. <laughs> yeah, you guys are on the we're on the west coast over here. So yeah, so don't I'm call really, like I'm, seven I'm in the morning when you it, but at five o'clock in the morning, I call at five AM in the morning. I'm probably I'm probably working out or sleeping. So <laughs> and now you do realize I just put your phone number out on open Facebook, right? Paul? That's, I, that's fine. All right. You don't you know what for calls you might. <laughs> you might <get> on. <laughs> oh, Ed's on here. Hey, Ed. Good to see you, Ed. Uh, Ed's one of my, my buddies. Uh, all right. So these are, are these the classes, Paul, that are in this 10 week course? In that link there, that, that's a 12 week, yeah, 12 week course, yes. I, oh, in, 12 weeks. Yeah, it's 12 weeks. Is it the stuff that's in this little red house? Is some of it is, yeah, yeah. They're going to go through. I mean, they're going to be some people. It might. I'm a. T I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Some people love it, and then uh -huh. I mean, like any class you take in school, there's going to be the people up front in the middle of the class, and in the back, the ones in the back of class is like, I'm only here because I have to be here. Well, yeah, absolutely. Here, I mean, tell me one person you know that doesn't use money. <laughs> I mean, if they, I, I wish. Right. If they make money and they have a family, I would think that they would want to pay attention because there's going to be a lot of things in here that they simply never, ever got in school. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, a basic budget. Is this it, Tom? Did you pull up the link? It is. This is the first. Look, uh, right, Paul. Yeah. So it says okay. here is free to register. So if I register, what do I get? You get you get twelve classes. They go twelve classes. Uh huh. Okay. All right. So you guys, that that wording is funky, right? Free to register sounds like free to register, but we're going to charge you for something else down the road. That's that's not if the they case. Wanna, if they want to get involved, buy something. They're they're free to do. To, I mean, they don't have to buy anything if they don't want to. Okay. There's not. They're not going to be like forced to. Okay. Now give us your credit no. card, and we're going to ding you for no. something. All right. Uh, no. All right. Sounds good. Okay, you guys, so this was this was our idea is that you could begin educating your people on financial management, especially because with with uh, COVID-19 happening the way that it did, a lot of people were caught unawares. Were you? I know I was. I know a lot of people were really caught unawares, did not have the amount of money that they should have had in the bank. I did not. Now, was I okay? Yes. But did I feel comfortable when it was going on? No. When I heard everything was shutting down, uh, we were maybe not going to be working for, you know, in the beginning, we were talking about not working for three months. Was I happy? I was not. Did I sleep like a baby those first few nights? I did not. <laughs> so if you were like me, then um, maybe you also are putting a little bit more time, energy, and effort into some financial planning. And let's share this, you guys. We can do better with our people and for our people, especially in the context of what's going on today. So you guys know, Tom and I, we don't really go political very often, right? But in the context of, of what's happening today, it's true that our people are in a worse place than a lot of employees that are out there in the world. Now, I'm not comparing that um, our, our employees are in any way related to, you know, the, um, the problems that the different races are having, any of that kind of stuff. But we can't deny that the employees that we have tend to not get the education, the help, the support that they need. And here's one way that we can at least help with this one area. I mean, we gotta be doing a lot more, of course, but here's a way to help in your area, your people. I mean, Paul, Paul shared a slide here in the deck. 60% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings. What percent of our employees, our team members, fall into that category, probably more than 60%, right? I'll tell you in my company, uh, that number is probably closer to 95%. So, I mean, we have an obligation as employers to at least, there's only so much we can do in this industry. We don't have the means to pay six figure salaries to cleaning professionals. The economics don't support it. Right. So if we're going to help our people, we have to help them through education. And this is this is I mean, this isn't all of it, but this is definitely part of it. We have to to help our, our, our team members to understand what money is and how to use it more wisely. And, you know, over time, get to a point where you've got much more than a thousand dollars in the bank because you can't live in this world long run and have, you know, maybe, no sense of going into the details. I mean, you, you understand, everybody understands why that's important, but we get caught up in the day-to-day -day hustle and bustle of just, you know, trying to get the homes cleaned and, and deal with all the things that we're dealing with. This is important. And, and we need to be thinking more about providing this type of training and support to, to, to the people that we count on. And, and this is a, a, an opportunity for us for retention as well. A lot of people in our industry, a lot of business owners really struggle with retention. It's harder to leave a company that is building you up. It is really hard to leave a company that is making you better, making you more, in this case, maybe financially secure. And I really love what Tom always says about teaching our people about not just making money, but building wealth. 
when I don't know about you guys, but I know in my company, my none of my employees, not one of my employees ever thinks that the word wealth will be attached to them in any way, shape or form. None, not even one. And I feel like that's really sad. Like, it's like, where is your hope when you can't even see a chance for wealth in your future? Uh, I gave up offering financial planning advice. Hello to my ladies a while back. But what you're saying is so correct. We'll try again. Yay. Good. I'm glad you can try again. Yes. I actually, I feel better. I don't even care that the beginning of this PowerPoint, or not PowerPoint, of this Facebook Live was um, a struggle. You saying that, Farnas, made me feel much better. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I'm so, super happy. Yeah. yeah. Had success. We are against the hour here, so okay. I'm going to honor that. Paul, this was really good information. Sorry, we had some technical stuff up front. Yeah. You know, once you know we get down the road a little bit, but you know, maybe we can get together down the road and you can, uh, you know, pitch this again and help us uh, in a more controlled setting over a longer period of time because this is uh, this is important stuff. Well, that would be really fantastic. I, yeah, I, I, that would be an opportunity that that uh, would be fantastic, and and um, maybe I can find some resources you guys could could share with your employees because I know a lot of it is just their thinking, and if we can if we can share with them little bits and pieces here and there that can they can start changing their thinking because we yeah. all where we are based on our thinking pure and simple so if we can work on that yeah um, true and shannon also is saying that she loves the idea of that for just 25 dollars you can get started so yeah. um she 25 bucks that is totally reasonable i feel like if you're paying weekly or if you're paying bi-weekly it makes it even more palatable for people right if they're getting paid weekly and they only have to pay seven dollars a week that seems affordable especially to your smokers because they're used to spending what ten dollars on a pack of cigarettes <laughs> so right right bucks a week or or a starbucks coffee okay so right. tomorrow, tomorrow is on the spot and we've got everything lined up. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be rapid fire questions. Liz, myself, and our special guest who you're just going to have to be here tomorrow to find out who it is, but you don't want to miss it. It's going to be, it's going to be good. <laughs> Bring your questions. Bring I your got a hint. Questions. Go ahead, Tom. What? No, you got to bring your questions because each yeah. question, everybody, each one of us will take one minute or less to answer your question. And we have a timer. And once we get to uh, the 60 second mark, uh, you know, we get buzzed and we have to, you know, be quiet and it goes to the next person. And um, we're going to get a lot of stuff knocked out real quick. So um, if you have any questions about anything related to house cleaning business or, you know, we're willing to take questions on whatever you got. We might know more about some things than others, but, but bring it on. Please, no fly fishing questions for me because it's going to be, that answer is going to be so short, so boring. All right. But I do have a hint. I have a hint about our secret guest. It's a man. I got one more hint. Larger than life. When you think of him, you will forever think, yes, he's larger than life. All right. You got my big clues there, my big hint. See if you can guess who he is. And join us tomorrow to find out. Thanks, guys. Oh, Paul, thanks thanks again. again, Paul. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, both of you. Appreciate, really appreciate it. Five. Bye-bye.